show you guys real quick what I'm doing here is sort of a test. Uh, we have learned that this soil packs ridiculously hard. It's got just enough silty clay sort of stuff in it that, believe it or not, I went through here about a month ago and deep plowed with my middle buster plow there and then disked it and then planted those little cabbage plants over there. And these things, they just haven't grown at all. I was, I was a little concerned buying them in the store because they, the bottom of them was pinched, kind of like they had damped off, but they, I mean, yeah, they've grown a little bit, but hardly anything since we put them in the ground. But what they're doing, these little, like these little cauliflowers, they're already trying to bloom on the little bitty things. So I think they're root bound, basically. I think the, the soil washed back in around the roots because it rained about a foot in the week after we planted them. But I think the soil packed back in tied around the roots and now they're just root bound. And so from their perspective as a plant, they're like, well, can't get any bigger than my roots, basically. Um, so they're trying to mature early. But I've got some, some potatoes coming up here kind of intermittently, uh, but a lot of them washed away too. So I actually just went through last night and planted a whole bunch more seed potatoes. And then I just went ahead and I just put compost right on top of them just so they have a loose friable soil. I know this is cheating. Um, in my opinion, I'd rather improve the whole soil, but I can't really go back through and improve the soil where there's already plants at. So what I just did just now is took the middle buster plow and I just cut a trench right here just to break that soil because if I drag a disc across the top of this, it doesn't even scratch it. At least the disc that I have for the three point or that I borrow from my neighbor, it just doesn't have enough weight. Um, so you have to really plow it deep and then disc it and then it hardly wants to do it anyway. So I just cut a trench with the plow as deep as it would go and then went back through with a rake and just filled it back in. And now I'm going to heap up on top of that trench with compost. So, you know, in, in the event of the potatoes here, I put the compost on top of a already hardened soil. Um, but I did, I'm okay doing that with the potatoes because, you know, potato itself, you're going to hill it up anyway. So I'll continue to hill it up basically with compost as they grow and hopefully be able to get a little decent, decent potato crop out of them. I've pretty much written off the cabbage and the cauliflower and the little bits of asparagus right there. A um, little bit of asparagus that's right there. It's, we just basically healed that in just so it wouldn't dry out and lose it. We don't expect to get any asparagus off that this year. We're basically just, you know, nurturing the, uh, basically just, just nurturing the, um, the crowns through another year. And then we'll transplant them to a permanent location later. But yeah, so I split this trench, filled it back in with itself just so it's broken up loose. Um, kind of my way of plowing and disking, if you would. And then I'm going to cover all over with this compost. And then I've got some sweet potatoes slips that need to go in there. All right, so maybe now you gotta get the idea of what I was wanting to do. Basically, just kind of forming up a, up a, a row, you know, or, or a hill, if you will, um, which it'll all settle and pack. That's why it's, it's built a little higher. It's, you know, four or five inches up, but it will settle and pack, but I wanna leave it as loose as possible. And actually when we get rain or when I water this in, that compost will work its way down into that subsoil. The other issue I wanted to mention here, part of why this soil I think is so bad, uh, not just does it pack hard, but it is, in my opinion, uh, void of any sort of living organisms. This soil, technically it's, it's mostly a subsoil. Um, this, is, this is overburden that I dug off when I was you know, stripping to um, open up my, my pond pit to get to clay. And when you're when I'm digging it with the with the excavator and it's getting turned over and it's broken up it's extremely friable it's got a real nice sandy content to it uh, it seems like it'd be really good quality soil but it also has silts and clays in it that's what makes it pack so hard but it also has no organic material in it um, so there's no life it's just sandy clay there's there's no uh, fungi there's no bacteria there's no living organism there's no worms um, so this soil is going to take a lot of improvement. I, I mentioned that um, when I was talking about, you know, getting all the wood chips, which is over yonder. You can see the wood chips between me and the beehives over there. And I intend to wood chip that whole area over there um, just to add that organic material. Anything I can get, hay, straw, manure, it doesn't matter. Anything that I can get to just add organic content to the soil, organic being biodegradable, not necessarily, you know, certified organic, although I would seek out stuff that is chemical free as much as possible um, but this soil it just has to have that it just doesn't have any sort of living organism in it so I'm really kind of having to cheat I really I might as well have just built raised beds um, 
but you can't you can't afford to garden like this on a large scale I mean this one yard of compost cost me seventy five dollars uh, and I've used up over half of it just putting out these little dabs that's why I'm being so stingy with it and not just spreading it because it's so darn expensive to, to try to buy finished compost so over the next few years I'll be making my own with all the wood chips and all the other material that I get um, anyway yeah I just wanted to show you the the little bed here that I built up for the sweet potatoes and kind of explain the thought process as to why I'm doing it that way I know it's not ideal if I could have planned ahead better I would have um, this garden is kind of reactive but I'm glad we're doing it because up until I planted this stuff this spring I thought this soil was great you know because like I said when, when it's dry and you work with it like this I mean this looks like this looks like okay stuff you know it's it's real friable and it's soft it feels nice but it's just dead it's just dead 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 and it's gonna take years to get it up to a good quality soil I know I can do it y'all ride along and watch don't check back in three years I want you to keep up with it for the next three years that's my way of saying uh, like, subscribe, and all that other stuff that other people say. Anyway, making a raised bed for uh, sweet potatoes.